Welcome everybody from Spark Systems YouTube channel. It's great to have you here today. Uh, we're going to continue looking at our urban parking system repository that's been designed and built in Enterprise Architect. And today we're going to look at custom reporting. And I'm excited because lots of people and customers that I uh, talk to, they're always talking about documentation and reporting and um, the ability to do that in Enterprise Architect is really powerful. So uh, welcome, Stephen. Great to have you here again today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, custom reporting in uh, Enterprise Architect and custom documents? Scott, thank you for the introduction and always delighted to be here. Yes, we're going to talk about one of my favourite topics around publications, and that is the custom document. So. In a previous video, we looked at creating uh, reports using the report builder. Just to put you into context here, we're on the publish ribbon. So that's yes. going to give us our focus towards things to do with publishing. And we see that there are a number of panels, model reports, diagram images, and model exchange. We looked at report builder in a previous video and yes. looked at generating documentation. Now, that's an incredibly powerful and incredibly flexible engine and pretty much can you know create any kind of document that you want but there's one thing that the custom document which is the next item along here uh, adds to this and it is the, the the speed and the ease with which you can create documents and so uh, you know the report builder because it's got so much more capability and power in it it will give you uh, a lot of uh, it will require a little bit more effort. But the custom document is a really quick way to get a document out. And the other thing is, Scott, you can cherry pick the things that you want to have in your document by just simply dragging and dropping. So let's get a, make a start. Now, we normally set our perspective here. I've got structural uh, selected there. Let's not worry about selecting that at the moment. And we'll see that there are a number of other publishing options there. So we can you know look at all of those. Uh, at some later time, but at the moment we're focusing on this uh, custom document. So one thing that that we want as part of our custom document is we want it to look like and feel like the uh, the kind of documents that we produce in our favourite word processor. So if you're using yeah. you know a particular uh, word processor, then you'll be familiar with the documents coming out and looking in a particular way. And there may be contra contractual obligations uh, for you to do that. So let's go into the resources panel of the browser and have a little bit of a look at some of the items in here. So we've got it. I'll just close all these down and, and talk about where we need to be. So we need to be in the, uh, let's have a look at this here. We want to be in the document guides section of this, and we want to look at these uh, model templates. So we did uh, a previous template for a business case. I want to create another template here, and I'm going to say create template. Enterprise Architect pops up a box asking for the name, and I'm going to call it uh, Business System Overview. So, of course, you may have all sorts of other documents. You know, you might have, uh, you know, requirement specifications or strategy documents. Um, uh, solution architecture documents, you can create your own. And you could put in a uh, a template group there as well. We'll just leave that out for the moment and we'll just say, look, create the template. It gives us a blank uh, a blank uh, canvas now. Let's just put some information in that. So I can just add things to this document. I'm going to have done some formatting of that. So uh, I'm just copying that from another location. And we've got, you know, this Kind of template for our document uh, all ready to go there. So let's just save that. And you can do that with any document that you want. And then we're going to inject the content uh, later when we create a publication. So let's just save that. And notice the document uh, word up there and the edit ribbon has appeared in context. So yep. we'll close this now. And let's go back to our project browser and look at the creation of the document. So we need to put make a location for this in the project browser. I like to make a, a package called publications. And I like to use the word publications because the word report, it you know, makes you think a particular way and, uh, you know, document. But Enterprise Architect has the ability to create reports and documents and things. I sort of put a big umbrella term over those in my browser called uh, publications. 
So let's do that. And let's go ahead now and create a custom document. So from the publish ribbon, from the model reports panel and the custom document item, uh, I'm going to call this uh, one here, the publication document name is going to call it a business system overview. And maybe, maybe I'll call it strategy to requirements. Is so it all right to have spaces in that document yeah, name? No problem at all, Scott. That's all uh, good to go there. And now we can see that uh, Enterprise Architect, the minute that I created that and saved it, it's popped up this new custom document from template. So again, saving us work, making us more productive. Let's have a look here and see what we've got. And you can see now that the reason why I created that other template, we've got a business system overview template. So we've got a business case one and a whole lot of other ones that we could choose that come uh, with the system. And I encourage anyone in the audience to build these up. They won't take you very long to do. You saw when I created that other template it was very simple. You can simply copy in uh, other uh, text and, and, and graphics from your existing documents. Let's say business system overview there and go OK. And you'll see now that that's brought in that uh, template for us. So, you know, we're we're all good to go there. And I'm going to drop my uh, drop my toolbox away there. And I noticed that there's two columns. There's a column on the left and then a column on the right with the content. So yeah, well, observed, why are there Scott? two columns? Well observed. So the thing that we're going to do, and this will all come to light now, and I look at this, got an executive summary there. Let's say that we wanted to put in um, some other text as well. So I can just simply, you know, put in some text. Let's put in some strategic context information and maybe, you know, something about the proposed uh, solution and maybe some financial benefits. So we can put a few different things in. Uh, I'm going to just copy those in from uh, other texts that I've got. And I encourage you to do the same if you uh, if you have this text. I'll put those in and now the, the kind of fun begins, Scott. I'm going to go control enter, give myself a new page. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cherry pick content from the uh, from the browser uh, into the model. So one of the things I want is requirements. So we talked about this being requirements. Now I'm going to drag that just simply onto my document. So I'll drag and drop that. And what's happened is now it's it's asking for a uh, template. Let me just get that onto the screen. It's asking me for a template to use. So this is the take home message and the important thing to understand with this, Scott. The model is coming, the information is coming from the repository and the repository contains the information in a, a sort of neutral format, if you like. It's It's got the elements in there. They've got a name, they've got some notes and things. But while I can format the notes, I need to be able to, tell this uh, reporting engine, you know, exactly how I want this to be rendered. Do I want all the elements to be rendered? Do I want you know, some of them to be left out? All sorts of other things like that. So we can go in here and we can choose uh, some a particular template. Let's choose this requirement report summary one. That looks like it might be useful. And let's choose that and hit OK. And you can see now that uh, these requirements have all been just automatically generated into our uh, in, into our yes. uh, report. Yeah, so you know, very very uh, useful, and you can see how quick that is to as to happen. And so our document starting to flesh out. The title functional requirements came from uh, the package name. That's part of the template telling it to do that. We've got the name of our, our requirement. We've got where it came from, and we've got information. Uh, in that we're coming from the notes. The system must provide access via smartphone app on all major platforms, including Apple, Android, and Google. So all of those things have gone in and, you know, we've used that template. So let's now look at adding some other things in here. We'll uh, make sure we're below that section because we need to make sure we don't go inside that section for reasons that will become a bit obvious in a minute. Let's put some other things in here now. Let's put our, uh, let's put our, domain uh, model in there. So let's have a look at that structural elements and uh, let's have a look at class model and let's just drop uh, this diagram in there. 
and we'll say uh, diagram report. Drop that in there, and you can see now that that diagram's um, gone in. So, so on the left column now, I can see two elements that are listed there. So yeah, yeah that's right, Scott. So this uh, this is the the things that I'm putting in. This is giving you a list of the things that you've dropped in here, right? So I'm going to just delete that section because I just show you how to do that. And I'm going to look at this one and I could change the template there if I wanted to and say, look, I want a different template. So let's change the template and say we want requirements report details and run that. And, you know, it's doing a little bit more work and let's see what it's up to. It may not be what we want, but we can just keep, um, you know, testing this. And it's come in here and it's done, you know, all sorts of oh, other. It's got all the pictures and everything. So it's far more detailed. Yeah. Far more detail. But, you know, I don't. This is for a particular business audience. I'm going to change that template back. I want it to be uh, just into the requirements summary there. So I can just flick that back again. Let's go and have a look, Scott, at what happens when uh, when I do something here. So let's have a look at this, this uh, book session here. So we've got this requirements talking about um, a book a session, right? So let's uh, talk about that and and change that in the uh, in the project browser. So I can you know make changes in in here, but let's go and, and get that element in the uh, in the project browser. Let's close this down for a minute. And the DPMS uh, DPMS book session. Let's just have a look at that. I'm going to use the Control F. Key, which is not that one. I'm going to click outside that for a minute and yep, not there. Um, I'm going to go back here and go control F and look for this particular term in the uh, in the browser. There it is there. It's in oh. week two. It's a requirement. Let's find it in the screen. browser. Yeah. Find it in the browser and uh, book session. OK, so now let's make a change to this. We'll go over to our properties window. Found that in the thing. Now someone's come up and said, look, you know, we want to change that element let's go in here and say book parking session so we've changed that and that will be changed everywhere it will be changed in all the diagrams as well but let's go back now and have a look at our publication now so we'll save that in there and if we right mouse click on here we've got update dynamic section now the important thing to realize about this scott is that some sections of the document are dynamic and other parts aren't. So this section here with the functional requirements is coming from the repository. The section up here is it's what we call static. static. Yeah. yeah. So let's have a look at that. We'll go back to our requirement there and let's right now speak on here and say update dynamic section. And you can see now that the book session requirement has been changed to book parking session which is what we change in the repository so once upon a time when you do things in a word document and make a change you're kind of stuck with that change for however long but using right. this kind of technique any changes to the model can be reflected in your documentation yeah exactly right scott so people that are creating documents outside a tool like enterprise architect uh you know, creating a right for their own back because they, they might have things in a in a spreadsheet, in another sort of format, in another location. And when that yeah. changes, firstly, they've got to be notified that it did change. And then secondly, uh, they've got to actually go through and make the change. Now, this, you know, that change may have occurred in all sorts of places. I mean, let's have a look at that book parking session and say, where is that in, in, in the diagrams? And you can see um, that, let me just bring that up onto the other monitor, to this monitor. You can see that that's actually uh, in, a, yeah. in a, a lot of different diagrams. So it's in the requirements model, requirements model times business case. So, you know, the use case traceability, let's open that one. And you can see now book parking yeah. session has been changed in there as well. So, look, there is a, an amazing amount of things that we can do here. Let's just do one other uh, simple thing. Let's put a, uh, you know, another page break in here and go up here and let's just, you know, drag another package in. We call this strategy to, uh, you know, to in the you know, document, it was called uh, business system uh, overview strategy to requirements. Well, let's put in uh, some strategy. So a simple thing, we can say, look, let's put our organization chart in there, drag that in. Uh, again, we have to choose a template. Let's just say a diagram report and put that in. Uh, and, you know, we've got our, our org yeah. chart in there now. Let's go in here now and say, look, we want to have the value chain in there as well. Let's just drag uh, 
uh, the value chain over as well and say diagram report. And, you know, we're going to have our uh, value chain in there as well. So, you know, an amazing amount of flexibility and ability, and ability to construct your own document. Like I said, the key to it is the fact that you can cherry pick things from the browser and put them into, you know, the repository and, uh, you know, they're, they're in, 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 in your document and just generating them out will generate that document for you. And you can pretty it up, do anything that you need to do by changing uh, the templates that you're using. So two templates that we used here, one of them was uh, the one that we looked at in the resources window under document guides model templates, which was our business system overview. That provided the sort of backdrop, if you like, the, the sort of, uh, you know, the, the canvas onto which we're going to drop all of our dynamic things. And then when we, when we dropped dynamic uh, elements from the browser, they yep. asked us to choose, they got us to choose a particular template. So you know, we got to, you know, look at the template. So uh, we could and choose. you could template. change those templates on the fly and. Exactly. And so, them out again. Yeah. Yeah. So if something wasn't, you know, wasn't quite as you wanted. And again, you might be have deadlines to meet contractual requirements. You could just simply go and change this diagram report or create it. And you want to say diagram report detail and put some more detail in there, whatever you wanted to do. Uh, the flexibility is. Does is, the enterprise architect provide all of those system templates? Yeah, all of those templates are provided uh, as part of the installation. And you know, like I said, you can copy any of them that you want, but they're all incredibly, incredibly useful uh, for pro producing things. And also, when you're creating your own templates, you can get ideas from these ones as well. You yep. can, you know, copy the whole template to create your own, or you could just say, "Look, I want some ideas from a particular template. I'm going to use that in my in my template." So that's uh, that's the topic, Scott, of the the publishing topic of custom documents. And like I said, it's one of my favourite things because of how you know incredibly flexible it is, and uh, you know, I can do anything in the in the template that I want. Yeah, it's uh, incredibly flexible and powerful. And the fact that you've been able to make changes and just uh, generate out a new document in what really is just a few seconds is uh, pretty remarkable. Yeah. So it is fun. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, to all of our audience, uh, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, we appreciate a, uh, a uh, thumbs up, a like. We really. Um, Love your feedback, uh, so please feel free to comment on the uh, the video. And we want to grow the Spark Systems YouTube channel, so feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the bell notification uh, for any of the uh, latest updates from Spark Systems. Uh, it's been great to see how powerful and flexible Enterprise Architect can be, and um, it's great to see the custom document feature in uh, in action. So thanks very much, Stephen, for your contribution today, showing us how easy it is. And I look forward to future videos on uh, documents and report generation and much, much more. Always a pleasure, Scott. And just remember, we've only just scratched the surface of the tools capabilities.